We continue now at the top of Daf Ayin Gimel Amad Aleph in Meseches Nedarim. This is Nedarim Daf 73a. And the previous summit, the Gemara asked, can a husband annul the vows of his wife by making a general statement that all of your vows should be annulled even though he hasn't heard of the particular vow? And the Gemara tried to bring a proof from a b'raisa because the b'raisa has a machlok is tanoim, whether a husband can appoint a shliach to annul the vows of his wife. And the machlok is tanoim is based on whether we make a gezeris hakosov that the Pasuk says, isha yekimenu v'isha yefeirenu, so maybe it has to be dafka the husband and it can't be a shliach. But other than the gezeris hakosov, it sounds like like from the Brysa, a husband could appoint a shliach to annul the vows of his wife, even though he hasn't heard the particular vows. And so the Gemara says it's not necessarily a proof. Hachanami here also, the Yomar lay that he says to him, he says to the shliach, L'chi meferla, when I hear of the vow, that's when it's going to be annulled for her. The Ran over here says, Hachanami damar le l'chi shamana, damar le l'apetropis. The husband says to the apetropis, that's the shliach, kal nedarim shetadur ishti hafer v'tachal hafarasa l'chi shamana. All the nedarim that my wife make, they should be annulled, and that should be chal, the annulment should be chal, when I hear of the vow. The apetropis nami b'hai lishna amar lo l'isha, and that's exactly what the apetropis says to the wife. Mufar lach l'chi shama balech. He says, it's going to be mufar, it's going to be annulled, when your husband hears of the vow. And so therefore, again, this brysa is not a proof. But the Gemara continues, if that's the case, if when he hears of the vow, so at that point in time, he should just annul it then. Why is he making this general statement? And the Gemara again answers like it answered on the previous summit, who savar dilma because he's afraid, maybe he's going to be distracted, there's going to be something else going on, and he'll forget to annul the vow. And so that's why instead, he makes this general statement that it should be chal when he hears of the vow. And the Gemara continues, Boy, Rami Barcham, Rami Barcham asks the following question, Is a deaf person, a deaf husband, able to annul the vows of his wife? If you're going to say that a husband is able to annul the vows of his wife even though he doesn't hear the actual vows, but that's because at least in theory he could hear the vows he is able to hear. But when it comes to a deaf person, the lav bar mishma who is not even able to hear, that would be an application of Rabbi Zera's principle. The Yomar Rabbi Zera, because Rabbi Zera said, when it comes to carbon mincha, if it's able to be mixed, so the mixing is not ma'akiv. You don't have to mix it. It's as long as it's able to be mixed. The idea is that it's 60 isaron or less in one kli. But if you have a situation of a carbon mincha which cannot be mixed, so so then the fact that it cannot be mixed is actually ma'akev, and that would make the karma mincha would not be good in such a situation. And the same thing would be true over here. By this cherish, since he's not even able to hear the nadarim, so that wouldn't be good, even though really a husband does not have to actually hear of the nether of his wife. Or, and the Gemara says, oh, deal, or maybe we say no. Vishama isha lo ma'akev, that the, her husband hearing is not ma'akev at all. Just like the husband doesn't have to hear the nether, so too if he's deaf, it's not going to be a problem. And the Gemara says, Amar Rava, Rava says, Tashma, come and hear the proof from the following Brisa. Vishama Isha, it says that her husband has to hear, Prat Laeshes Cherish, that comes to exclude the wife of a deaf husband. Shma Minon, the Gemara says, indeed, you see from this Brisa that by a Cherish, a Cherish is not able to annul the vows of his wife. And the Gemara continues, Iboy Lehu, they had the following question, Baal Mahu Sheyofer L'Shtei Noshav Bevas Achas, can a husband annul the vows of two of his wives in one in one statement. Say both of both of your vows are going to be annulled. Osa davka olav davka. It says osa her in the singular. So is that specifically? It has to be only one wife at a time, or it's lav davka. A person can do two wives at once. And the Gemara says Amar Ravina. Ravina says Tashma. Come and hear a proof. It says by sota ein mashkin shtei sotos kaachas. You're not allowed to give the drink to two sotos at once. Mebnei liba gas bechaverta because each one is going to be encouraged by her friend. So when one Sota sees the other one, sees her friend, that she's able to drink the waters, so she'll be encouraged to drink the waters, and we don't want to put them in that situation where they drink the waters even though they're really guilty, and so therefore we don't give to two Sotas at once. Rabbi Yehuda, Omer, Rabbi Yehuda says, Lo Hashem, who's that? This is not the reason why we don't. We don't do it, but there's another reason. Elam Yishum the, re- the reason actually is because the Pasuk says, Vihishka Osa Levad, it says the word Osa, we understand again, in singular, it has to be just one Sota and not two, and and therefore, just like Rabbi Yehuda says that with regard to the Sota, the same would be true when it comes to the annulment of the Nadarim. It says over there also in the singular, and therefore, he's only allowed to annul the vows of one of his wives. He's not allowed to do two at one time. We'll continue with this discussion in the next video on Daf Ayin Gimel Amud Beis.